You've just decided, man, I want to get my life right with God. Or you've been invited to somebody's church and decided that, you know, let me see what this Jesus is all about. Or maybe you just got saved somewhere. Give it felt like you're giving your heart. You're not sure. You're not sure. But then you come across people like this. And when they raided Mar-a-Lago, God didn't like that, Steve. That didn't set well in heaven. It didn't set well at all when they did that. You know, the scripture says, touch my, not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Well, they touched his anointing when they did that, his anointed, because uh, Trump is David. He's David. He began to be David when, uh, uh, when all of this, when Barack Obama's seal fell off of his podium. He began to take. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. It fell off and rolled away or something. It sure did. It sure did. And, uh, see, Obama would love to be the Antichrist. He would love to be the anointed one. Uh, because they named him that, remember? Yeah. But he, he's not. And this will be, he's not. He can't be now because he is now Gog in the spirit. He became Gog. And God has showed me several times what he actually means by the word wealth. Not what you think. Because the more you spend it for him, the more he's going to send it. Christ didn't actually live poor. He grew up in wealth, with wealth. He had wealth his whole life. So these people who try to say it's wrong to be rich, you know, it's more holy to be poor. I don't think so. Do you know, I saw some people's mansions in heaven. They were the size of New York City. One mansion. So he's not poor. And he's certainly not broke. At a ministry with, with motorcycles, and I saw him in heaven riding on this awesome motorcycle. Flames were coming out the back, of the, like a flames of light and fire. And but then I actually I didn't actually ride on the trails, but I saw these trails of fire. And as you see, you listen to people like this, and then you start to follow them and continue to follow them, and you think you're all good with the Lord Almighty. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're not good. If you come across somebody like a cat cur, Robin Bullock, and anybody that's associated with them that preach these types of messages, and you have fallen, unfortunately, for the snare of the devil. And before I go any further, folks, I jotted a few things down so the notes are back just briefly, because this is just a message. You know, I've been grieved very grieved. You know, that's one thing. You know, if you have a heart for the Lord, you want to share his goodness. You want to tell others about him. And at the same time, your heart should be filled with love and compassion if you are trying to be in right standing with him. And one thing I know, when I got right with the Lord, I wanted to tell everybody about his goodness and what he's done for me. And it grieves my heart when I see people seeking other things of this world, trying to fill the void that's empty within them. And, all, and I sit back and I say, gosh, they're missing it. They, don't, they just don't know and realize and understand that not all the money in the world is going to fill that emptiness. Not all of the love in the world from a human being is going to fill that emptiness. Not material things, not whatever, accolades and, and, and uh, promotions and whatever you think that you can gain in this world is going to fill that void with him. I have a co-worker that she has been seeking this love for after she divorced her husband, of 25 years in the last 10 years. 
she's been seeking this love and she's in her senior years now. She's about 65, 66. And she's just seeking this love, trying to fill the void and keeps getting the rug poured out from underneath her. And I try to, and, and, and she don't understand. And I'll try to chit chat with her, you know, uh, let her know, you know, you know, life, uh, uh, that, you know, that life is not, uh, validated by human beings. And, you know, and, and, you know, but, you know, I'm trying to witness to her in a way, but, you know, you gotta be, cause I'm not trying to be preachy, but at the same time, you gotta pick and choose your spots when you witness the people so that you don't come across as a Bible basher. And unfortunately, these types of people that I showed you in the video clips, these types of people, the Robin Bullets and Cat Curves, I, I showed you, these people are leading, can, are literally will be leading people to hell because they're destined for hell themselves. If they do not repent, which I don't, I, you know, as I mentioned before, some of these people, unfortunately, are so far gone, you know, they're on the road of no return. But if you have come across this type of person and you're trying to figure out, you, you're not sure. And I have on my notes, one thing you will never really hear these people talk about is the lost in such a way of, you know, having this grief and, and, and the compassion of those that are lost that you know that their souls are damned if they don't get right with the Lord. And, and, and but for them, it's only their goal is, is that I have on here that they want to convert people for their own purpose. You know, they want to build up their ministry with certain, you know, people. That's going to follow and be naive enough to continue to listen to their nonsense. Because as I always say, and I tell people all the time, any seasoned believer, if you've been a Christian and been rooted in the word of God and been following, uh, 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 walking with the Lord for any period, of, for a nice little period of time, you know, when you come across a fraud, you know, when you come across somebody that's trying to take advantage of people. And unfortunately, people have fallen for the snare of the devil and have come across these types of people. And they think that they're in right standing with the Lord. And they are not because these people have no concern about anything but themselves. And I have on here, number two, as Proverbs eleven thirty says, he who wins souls is wise. You can't, and I have on here, you can't win souls when you make it about yourself. Or some other human figure. And as you can see, these types of people, it's about themselves or uh, somebody in the political realm of figure that as we always talk about. They worship and idolize other people. And currently, Donald Trump, that's their political figure that they've lifted up, calling them David, calling him the anointed one, calling him the one that only can save things and do things. And you've elevated a human. That's not saving souls. It's, and then they'll say, well, we're praying for his family and all of these other things. When you should be praying for your own daggone family. Because as I said, all the time, most of us got people within our families and definitely friends and things that are unsaved. Why don't you ever hear them ever talking about that? You never hear them talking about their family and others, they act like as if everyone in their entire sphere is saved and everyone's all in great standing with the Lord and we got to, you know, go elsewhere. When it's right in the backyard that there's a whole lot of dysfunction within how their household, just like it's in all of ours. We got some dysfunction, all of us. Nothing's perfect in, in everyone's household. So I have that in here. That's the problem. Because if you're, because what that does is God says, that he shall have no other God before me. So if you are idolizing and worshiping and putting people up on a pedestal and, and instead of having God as the top of you and the head of your life and you're putting other people or putting this so-called prophet or whatever they want to call themselves head of your life, you're not walking. You're not in the right standing with God. So you could be in trouble thinking that you are okay with the Lord when you're destined for another place. And on here, finally, I have one here, <clears throat> excuse me, the danger of these false prophets 
One of the big things is that a lot of these people, they live a life by dreams. They live a life by dreams. Psalms 119, there's plenty of verses. I, you know, this is a whole nother video if I want to get into something else of this. But Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word, the word right here, the word of God, the word is the lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. That is a, 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 a light, you know, a light unto your path, a lamp unto my feet, light unto your path. That's what you follow. Yes, I believe that dreams can have, an, you know, that dreams can, uh, the Lord can speak through dreams from time to time. But when you are a so-called minister, preacher, prophet, whatever you want to call yourself, and every one of your messages is from dreams, then you're not walking with the Lord. You're actually, you're not walking because we're not to live a life guided by dreams. We're not to live a life like that. Because dreams can deceive you. And, you know, as many of you know, I, you know, I, I'm a dreamer myself and the devil. And that's another video for some of you that are new. He tricked me at age 10 through a dream. Came back as my father dressed as an angel, which my father has been dead. You know, where he was murdered when I was five. Came back as an angel when I was uh, uh, 10 years old in a dream and kept saying in the dream, I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you. And I was so excited and, and all of this. And I told this in another video as a testimony. I have something to tell you. And I kept saying, well, you got to tell me, Dad. And then he told me in the dream, well, I have to go now. I have to go. And I woke up at 10 years old, mad at my father, who's been dead for five years. Mad. Like, why would you come back and visit me and talk to me like that in a dream? But I did not know because I wasn't in church. I didn't know. Family didn't. You know, I didn't know. I'm thinking, like, what's going on? But I didn't realize until later on. As I started diving into the occult, started, you know, trying to uh, perform seances and, and, and Ouija boards and all of the things, trying to speak to the dead, call my father back up to get that answer. And the devil fooled me with that. And see, you could be misled by dreams. Sometimes it's just, it could be nothing, but other times the devil can use these dreams. And a lot of these people, as I mentioned before, the devil is using them. And these dreams are nothing but that they're, they're being familiar spirits and certain things are happening. Nine times out of ten, none of their crap comes to pass. Uh, and not to, like, I'm going to say ten times out of ten. Sometimes, you know, if you sling enough mud on the wall, you're getting lucky on something because they're lying, a lot of them. But that's the thing. These peoples are frauds. And they're living a life not followed by the word of God. They're living a life followed by things you know, trying to read into everything, spiritualize every single thing. And you, you can't do that. We're not to live a life like that. We're to pray. We're to get in the word of God. We're to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and guide us. As the scripture says, as I told you, his word will guide you. His word, he trust in him with all thy heart. You know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And that's the main goal. And as I close, this is why many people are going to be in trouble. And these pro-called prophets, they're going to have their day. There's a lot of scriptures, but, you know, this is the one that the Lord gave me to close it out on. Revelations, many of you know it, 21.8. And it says here, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the, the murderers, the sexual in in uh, morale, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars will be co-assigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur, which is the second death. Hell, that's basically the second death. The first death is when this body is gone. The second death is going to be where those people that have been lying in the Lord's name, those that think that they're saved and they're not in right standing and the, and the devil has used these so-called people to bring them along and, and, and trap them and think that they're saved and they've been following people that you think that you're in right standing with the Lord, 
and you're going to be dragged along. And guess what? You're going to find yourself in the fiery lake of fire when it's all said and done because you've been tricked. You've been taken and you, and you didn't listen. Some of you didn't listen. You were, you were so addicted to that person, that person, because you want to hear these messages from the cat curs and that somebody that claimed they went to heaven a thousand times and all of this. And you would just want to hear it because it sounds so good. Well, you know what? You better be careful. You better be careful. You know, back um, when it was warm there, there was a guy in the front of my neighborhood, a motorcycle guy. And the wife said she he had zoomed by her. She had saw him and, and they came around and she had zoomed by. And unfortunately, the guy was having a great time on his motorcycle and he ran into a truck and skid under there, that truck and lost his life instantly, right in the front of our neighborhood. I saw his body laying out there, sheet covered, young guy, and lost his life just like that. And I, you know, and the first thing I thought, I said, man, I don't know if, you know, I hope he was right with the Lord or no, whatever, but you know, this, it's over like that. It could be over just like that for you. And you find yourself in big trouble. Because there's not going to be, Cat Kerr, Robin Bullock, all of them are not going to be able to talk you out of hell when you have to stand before Christ. They ain't going to be able to save you. Them holding them staffs and being up there, they ain't going to be able to save you and do anything for you. You're going to be in big trouble if you have to stand before the Lord and you didn't get yourself right. So that's what I have for now. Um... I'm a little behind on some of the messages here. Been busy, busy, but that's okay. My daughter is home for spring break. I got to take her back this weekend. So been a little busy and things, but bear with me. We'll continue to talk about issues the church run away from. Take Satan head on. Punch his butt right in between the chops. Evangelism for God is the channel. Until the next time, my friends, take care. God bless.